There we go. Okay, so uh, today we'll be playing some uh, DCS World, I guess, with the SU-25T. Um, so I plan on just really going through some of the quick missions here. So let's go with a uh, free flight first, and let's really just kind of see how far we can get into um, all of these. <clears throat> Do do bit of a loading sequence, I guess. I think it picks up uh, pretty fast. Um, afterwards, I'm afraid to touch the screen. I was gonna move something, but uh, DCS won't really doesn't like doing anything. Will list uh, recording apparently. There we go. Take that down so I can see. Uh... Yeah, sure, that works. So that way I can see what the delay is um, on my second screen as to uh, how that stuff works. I'm just going to pause this real fast. Go to uh, volume control here. I think I need to boost DCS world up into a decent volume. And now I think we should be good. So yeah, um, let's take a look at the uh, mission briefing here, which I think it's just B, or no, we pause it and we take a look at it. Sure, so my task for today is free flight, enjoy flying the SU-25 without anything trying to kill us. Um, so I think for this one, honestly, it's just uh, fly the waypoints. So let's take a look at our handy dandy map. Not that that's very, very readable, but um, yeah, it looks like we're just Flying kind of like a five waypoint route back to the airfield. Uh, so we'll do exactly just that. So, yeah. Hang on. Um, something isn't working here. <clears throat> Shit, I had to boot, reboot uh, DCS World. Won't, uh, won't get my uh, head tracking thing to work. Can't get, um, what is it? Uh, what, what is it called? Uh, track IR without booting that back, uh, we're rebooting it. So there we go, quick and easy process. Okay, so now it should work. There we go. So, same deal. Um, free flight. Uh, today I feel like going through quite a few of these uh, quick play missions just to get a hang for the, uh, or get a feel for the aircraft again. Uh, so it should be quite nice. Now, for volume control. Yeah, I guess the um, sounds, the engine sounds just don't come up for whatever reason. But that is that. So now I have uh, hit tracking enabled, so that'll actually model where I look for the most part, and that is currently an active pause. There we go. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So let's get some of our uh, dashboard things set up. And yeah, like recently I've been looking through a lot of the stuff for um, for DCS World once again. I've been uh, I bought a new set of uh, joystick controls, so that's kind of the the rationale behind that. And I guess we'll learn the basics of uh, flying this thing once again. So, yeah, there we go. Once we go outside of the plane, then you can kind of hear the engine noises. <clears throat> so, yeah, that is that. Um, I think it might actually be because I, I have it set up so that the in-game sound is representative of, like, you know, what you'd hear as a pilot. So maybe that's actually kind of why... No, no, the engines aren't that quiet. But um, yeah, so there's a part of that to it. Uh, so anyhow, we're just supposed to get ourselves comfortable with uh, flying the SU-25T. So this is a pretty handy dandy. Um... Uh, Russian ground attack uh, plane, or you know, like cast cast craft aircraft, I guess. 
Um, I suppose, like, for the sake of, you know, what's inside this game, kind of like a simple version of the, um, of the A10C, is it where, A10C, or A10A. Flies like an absolute brick, but it's, uh, it's quite nice, it's quite nice. So, um, for people who don't really play this, I guess I'll give you guys a rundown as to, like, you know, what's kind of happening. So we're flying white points. Um, you'll see on the HUD there, as in, like, the central part of my screen, uh, there's the in route symbol oh god that zoom in is uh it's pretty bad but yeah so we're in we are in route we're about three kilometers away 2.8 2.7 ish uh, away from where we're supposed to be and we are currently headed to waypoint two so in the middle of my hud you'll see the um you know some sort of virtualized representation of our plane and our uh, recommended route indicated by the little circle thing uh the side uh column there represents our current um I think current pitch and then you know how fast or how many how many meters we're getting per second i believe um top left top right is our speed and altitude respectively so things like that and this this uh this mission right here i think is just a, a very easy steady flight so actually we we seem to have um gone past uh waypoint two so i just manually change that to <coughs> excuse me uh waypoint three instead so yeah, it's just flying the points. Do and yeah, so DCS World is you know quite a quite an action packed, where quite a quite an in depth simulator. I mean, it can be action packed at times, and it can be just kind of kind of kind of nice and relaxing. I guess is one way to put it, uh, such as right now. So in the meantime, while we go to waypoint three, let's take a look at some of the other gauges we have here. So there's a lot, there's a there's a lot of stuff for um for for each and every single one of the planes inside the game. That's a kind of like a growing collection right now. Um, this is actually a modded version of the uh, SU twenty five uh, T cockpit, I guess, in the sense that I have skins to make all of the um, all of the readings here. So all the in the English letters. Into, uh, where all the uh, lettering into uh, English, which the base uh, game I don't believe actually has that. So, and and even this in this version, if you look slightly above like the uh, the altitude control stuff, um, some of the gauges are still in Russian. So there's that. So yeah, this game is actually VR ready as well. Um, somebody in, in chat I guess mentioned that. Uh, so if you do have an Oculus Rift or something like that, where uh, I think it supports Oculus Rift and this uh, one other uh, VR setup, where uh, provided that you 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 have the actual you know goggle set, um, I think you can yeah just kind of play it uh, through that, which is equally neat. So I think this is a very short mission. Once we fly, um, so currently we are one kilometer out of. Uh, Waypoint four. Once we get to waypoint four, I think it's just uh, off to landing. So there we go. We hit uh, the waypoint. So now we are on return mode. So once we go to the return waypoint, then we switch into landing mode and then kind of go from there, I guess. So let's bring that in. This should be a very very fast mission. For that, some of these gauges kind of become important. So this one right over here, that's I think HSI. The little yellow bit on the top is where we're currently going. Uh, the arrow, the white arrow in the middle, is kind of where we're where where our waypoint is. It just changed because our waypoint just changed. Um, similarly, this is I think the the gauge above it is the uh, VSI, so it shows our current plane uh, path. And then with like the yellow arrow there in the middle, it's uh, it's nicely centered right now. Is kind of what's our, our our recommended path. And those are just I guess the gauge representations of that little uh, recommended path circle that we have. So right, so currently we need to spin the plane all the way around because I think the landing, the actual field is uh, somewhere maybe behind us, something like that. Let's check the gauge, it's supposedly just to our left somewhere. So anyhow, there's that. Take a look at the gauge. I can't really see the airfield right now, but uh, should be somewhere over 
here. Yeah, there it is. There it is. So we found it. So now we had just have to steer within in that to uh, or into that general direction. So this is kind of the uh, quick and dirty way of doing it. But we're gonna skip following the waypoints entirely. They're not. They're not that precise. They're not that terribly useful. Let's bank in. And I think, uh, according to our gauges, it should be right in front of us, but I don't think that's actually the case. Yeah, no, I don't think that's actually the case there. So that's kind of weird, but okay. Fifteen kilometers out. Fourteen. And that is pretty much that. I think it's I think it's just right over here. Yeah, right over there. There's a lot it's sometimes the um yeah, sometimes the gauges are a little inaccurate, but uh okay, I see where it is. So we're actually going to have to break out, go over here a bit, so we see the actual airfield. We're going to give ourselves some more room here before we try to land the plane, but uh, yeah, that's kind of that. So I mean, I'm still trying to figure <laughs> out some of the stuff here. Uh, sometimes this gauge... The, uh, yeah, the actual gauges don't seem to be, I don't know, either, either they're, they're not perfect, either they're, they're pretty vague, or it's just kind of some of the, uh, scenarios there. Uh, so currently, I mean, the, the airfield pretty much follows the, the main road down there, running, um, parallel to us right now. Well, not parallel to, at a, at a slight angle. So, what we want to do here in... And again, this is kind of a rough uh, <laughs> approximation for what you're supposed to be doing for a landing, but uh, we will just try to... Fuel, 1500. Oh, there's the fuel um, thing. I'll do that, drop the... Up the throttle, level it out, and there is our um, airfield. So one thing is that, like, I'm pretty happy with the uh, the joystick setup that I, I I bought recently. It's the X52 SciTech X52. Uh, the only problem with it is that I would prefer it if it had more um if it had more uh, like actual button setups than like a lot of sliders. Like I have a lot of things that you know, I, I can kind of uh, move to to do things like that to move like the camera, but it doesn't seem to have kind of uh, you know I would I would prefer like a like a D pad like we're we're actually two D pads instead of kind of the the zoom in ability that I I have there. Uh, but enough of that. Anyhow, we want to go for a landing. So I think what we do here is that we're already in the first set stage of uh, flaps. That's fine. Uh, drop the flaps. Drop the flaps. Oh crap. Ah, that reminds me. Sorry, folks. I gotta pop out of the game for a second. Switch that on because uh, oddly enough, a lot of the a lot of the driver support for this is actually, or a lot of the button support is on the drivers. It's not actually on the um, the module itself. So there we go. Now I can deploy my air brakes, drop the gear, and try to go for a very, very uh, quick and dirty landing here. So drop that, burn, try to get, I don't mind it if we pick up some speed right here. And that's good enough in terms of being aligned. The thing with the SU-25T is that, uh, 
despite it's like we're we're still nevertheless going pretty fast here for for landing. But once we uh, touch down, there's a parachute that uh, actually deploys. Drop the mirrors if you can uh, see those from there. But those will hopefully slow us down if we didn't come down too fast. That it would, uh, it, and it actually does simulate the fact that, like, if you come down too fast, there's a there's a good chance that you'll rip the 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 parachutes, right? So hopefully that's not it in our case. That is really loud. I'm gonna fix that shortly. But uh, looks like we did lose the parachutes. But nevertheless, it looks like we've. Uh, we still have a lot of uh, room left on the tarmac, so that pulls us to a uh, stop. Yeah. So I did buy a. Uh, I bought the SciTech X52 used, so uh, like oddly enough, I mean, it's like I bought it for 50 bucks, and compared to like retail price, which I think is like 250, it's pretty good. Uh, the only problem is that I'm in um, Canada, so like the shipping for it alone is like 50 dollars or so. So. Um, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> like that. Um, but let's take a look at audio right now. That's mildly better, but um, I'm going to lower that even more. There we go. It's kind of quiet enough that uh, it works out. So we can spend the time to um, actually take our handy dandy plane here and move that back onto the... Uh, I don't know wherever the hangars are on this airfield, really, but I think we'll call this mission, uh, you know, like a like a like a like a success right here. And yeah, there we go. So that is mission one out of uh, a few done. And here's what I'll do: I'll go to settings, and I think what I need to do is I need to go to gameplay and turn off the um, <clears throat> the what is it? Hide control stick, I'll do that. Uh, mini HUD, no mirrors. Sure, go for it. Model enlargement, birds. Sure, put some birds there. What was I gonna do to turn... What was I gonna turn off here? Was, uh... Something. I was gonna turn off something about the audio settings in the game. Because they are... Or they seem to be really, really quiet. Show body... In cockpit when available, sure. Uh, player external view, special, no. Audio, ah, there we go, here like in helmet, so there. So, um, that moves us to the next uh, practice mission, I guess. So we can go for a dusk landing at Muzdoc or target practice. Target practice sounds like a lot more fun than uh, than the dusk landing because it's, it's honestly pretty much what we've just done. It's arguably slightly prettier, but... Um, that is kind of that. wait until this holy jesus these loading screens are <laughs> pretty long for for what they are also uh bought a ssd recently so hopefully um okay so here's here's kind of the weird